Why do we need a baseline for both these carburetors? So we can test all of them. Here on Bear Budget Performing Mopars. Let's begin. You might remember my last video where we had some interesting CFM flow numbers. Today, we're clearing things up. On my previous test, I did a quick and dirty upside down flow test which basically the air was being pushed up and brought out through the top of the carburetor instead of being pulled down or pulled down like an engine would normally pull air through a carburetor. That and my flow wrench was inaccurate. The results, the numbers were way off. In stock form, it flowed 518 CFM. After all these modifications, it flowed 576. I realize now that that was misleading. For this test, I'm doing it right. I built a proper adapter, flipped the carburetor right side up, but more importantly, I have fully calibrated my flow bench. Now we're sim simulating real air flow through the carburetor, just like the engine would be pulling it through. To be clear, this 600, whoop, this 600 Holley carburetor flows 606 CFM on my bench. We'll go through all the modifications on it, except for we'll retain the choke tower, and then we'll test it again. After that, we'll start testing what we, this video is all about, and that's all the different air filters and adapters and plates. We won't be showing each step like we did here. So if you want to see all the modifications that I did to this carburetor, you need to go here to the my previous video where all these steps are done in great detail. We won't show them today. We're just going to get it done and get it back on here and get a number. Here we go. Notice the depth on this one. Wow, a 12 CFM jump there. Well, there you have it. Leaving your base on increases your flow. From this point, it's all downhill.
Stick around to the end of the video to find out why this Holly carburetor flows so much more than the other one. The choke tower is but a small part of it. Let's take all these numbers and make some sense out of them. The flat lid, it didn't care. There was no CFM gain. The small drop with the black one, eh, a couple CFM. The large drop with the choke, it liked it. it gained five CFM. Without choke, it didn't care. Large drop, this is the one that would impress me. The large drop with the lifted center gained 12 CFM. If you still got a choke, if you've got a stock carburetor, that's the lid I'd be going out and researching to find. I don't know where it come from. It's been kicking around in my garage for forever, so I, I don't I don't know. And I when I bought the new one, it it was a large drop here. So anyways, without the choke, yeah, I didn't like it at all. Minus eight. The dome, yeah, three CFM on both of them. From this point, I picked, before I did any of this, I picked the best base plate for each scenario. So obviously, I picked this one for the choke tower, and the best one for the non-choke was this one. It was only 3 CFM across, but I picked the dome. So all these are tested according to that. The open element, that's the element with the, the white paper and the chrome lid, minus 25 CFM, and minus 39 CFM. The dual element, which was the black filter with the black filtered lid, 21 C loss of 21 CFM and a loss of 27 CFM. The dual inlet or the dual snorkel, that was interesting all by itself. The dual snorkel or dual inlet, 107 CFM and 125. That's a lot. Flip the lid over, uh, it's amazing how much it recovered. 73 and 82. That's not bad. Went and grabbed the filter off my CUDA, threw it on, minus 92 CFM and 89 CFM. That seems kind of odd. Put the clean air filter on it, minus 35 and minus 15. That filter's going on my CUDA. But now, let's take a look at this. Why is this so much higher? This is a paper air filter, just like this one was a paper air filter, but I, it, there's a ton more CFM loss there than here. Well, this is my theory on it. Number one, all these filters were brand spanking new. They'd never, they'd been out of the box and put on my flow bench. This one came right off my CUDA, although the filter is only a year old. I put it on before the beginning of the racing season last year. Maybe it was a little plugged up. Maybe it, it, it picked up more dirt and trash than I thought. But I think the other big difference is with this one, I had, we used the, the best flowing one, which was 12 CFM. The one that's on my CUDA 
is like this black one. It's so it would only have created a two. So you figure this one had a 10 CFM advantage. So if you subtract or added 10 to this would make the 25 to a 35, which makes sense. But on the other side, the black one, 1 CFM to 3 CFM, not a whole lot of difference. It's pretty good apples to apples base plate comparison. And it only took 15 CFM away from the carburetor. I bought that one because I wanted to see how it would work on my car, but I didn't expect that, that kind of improvement. Pretty interesting. What do you think? Now, I guess the other thing we need to talk about is the choke towered one had 689 CFM after I'd ground it and modified it just like I did this one, but leaving the choke tower on, of course. 689 CFM compared to this one with the choke tower had 740 CFM. The choke tower being removed is not the difference between them two. Um, probably, maybe 10 CFM? We're being generous probably is the difference between this one and this one and that bugged me and I couldn't figure out why there was so much difference between the two so I had to go and do some more investigating and what I found was that the base plate these are both 1850s these are both 600 CFM carburetors they shouldn't have had that much difference so I had to get look uh, look both of them over real good trying to figure out just what what's going on here well, the base plate, okay, that's where your, your throttle blades are. On this one, and I'll have to go out and measure it again to tell you exactly, but it was like, uh, I don't remember. 50 thousandths larger throttle bores. Bigger diameter than this one. So this had less restriction than this one, and that's why this flowed more. The other thing we need to look at is when you're looking here and you're going, well, that took 107 CFM away, and this took 125. Why is that? The choke towers remove, it's better. It's because it's pulling more air. And so there, it creates a bigger restriction. What else? Okay, so why am I putting this old, dirty filter back onto my CUDA? Why am I not putting that one on? Because my first race is Memorial Weekend, and I am going to make a few runs with that carburetor or that air filter. And then I'm going to take it off and put that air filter on. And I'm going to make a few more runs. This will be the true test as to whether my engine wants more CFM than what it can get through that slightly restricted air filter. And for those of you who want to geek out a little bit more, here's some more specs. The dome stands two and a quarter from here to here. And from here to where it sits on top of the carburetor is one inch. Inch and three quarters. And then from here to where it sits on the carburetor is a half an inch. The flat one is a half an inch and it is an inch from here to where it sits on the base. This one is two inches and remember this is the one that works so well on the choke one because of that big depth. It's one inch from here to where it sits on top of the carburetor. Which it's the same as here as an inch from here to here only it's just not straight up and over it's nice rounded. The black one's going to be even harder to see because I had to go find me a different marker that doesn't show up very well. From here to where the base sits is an inch and a half. And from here to where it sits on top of the carburetor is three eighths of an inch. With that information, you can at least pull your air carburetor or your air cleaner off, take your air filter off and see how close you are to one of these. Or if you're buying one, 